Hello everyone, welcome to a new session in Orta Americas TV. My name is Carla Garcia, I am Orta Americas Technical Service, and today we're going to learn about crop protection. Why is it important to prevent pests and how can we control them? Today's class will cover uh, prevention and control. How can we recognize the pests present in our crop? We will speak about fungi and bacteria. Also, I will go over insect and common arachnids found in greenhouse crops. This will include white flies, strips, spider mites, and aphids. So why is it important to invest in prevention? I think we all know the potential risk that pests represent in greenhouse production. Greenhouse are um, most of the time a closed system where organisms, organisms can spread quickly. Therefore, it's important to prevent any potential infestation. Pest infestation can cause big losses, making our plants uh, not efficient and also our product not marketable. So let's start speaking about fungi and bacteria. These two organisms have uh, some stuff in common. Their development can be triggered by environmental conditions. So fungi and bacteria can affect plant leaves, fruits, and roots. In hydroponic system, it's common to find bacteria in roots. Healthy roots are supposed to be uh, a color close to white. However, uh, presence of bacteria can cause brownish color on roots and also can uh, tend to uh, make, um, make them a little bit sticky. Uh, we can also notice presence of bacteria when a reading pH in our system. Uh, usually when we have bacteria present, pH would tend to go uh, lower levels. In general, uh, the cause of fungi presence uh, and bacteria can be due to warm temperatures, high humidity, poor airflow, uh, low light levels, and bad sanitation practices. There are several conditions that can trigger uh, microorganisms to develop in our system. Here are some examples of, for example, high humidity uh, can cause uh, some uh, fungi and bacteria to grow also if we have high density that can also promote conditions to develop these microorganisms. Some common fungi pests are powdery mildew and downy mildew. Both are caused by spores. However, uh, powdery mildew have not motile spore. Downy mildew have a spore that can swim in water. So it's very important to avoid wet surface because uh, these spores can, can swim and spread uh, throughout all the greenhouse. But how can we recognize uh, powdery mildew? It's important always to check plant leaves and look for any uh, powdery spots. Uh, when the disease is already spread, we can also seal the leaves to get chlorotic or yellow and the form. Downy mildew is caused by a fungi-like species. Uh, it's called omicets. Uh, the symptom can be easy to recognize in lower uh, leaf surface. You can also see like white powdery. Uh, we can find a fussy white mold or yellow patches, just like um, in these pictures. But what happens when we are growing plants inside of a plant factory? In an indoor system, we have the option to select different light sources. So which source of light is better to avoid unwanted microorganisms? Let's focus uh, basically in how uh, the source of light can affect the control of humidity and temperature. High pressure lamps require additional ventilation to keep uh, the target temperature, meaning that uh, high pressure lamps tend to accumulate to accumulate, uh, accumulate uh, more heat. Therefore, it's easier uh, to get fungi under high pressure lamps. In addition, uh, light intensity drops significantly over time. And if we don't replace these lamps, then we will have a low light intensity that 
that also can trigger uh, fungi and bacteria development. High pressure sodium lamps promote warmer conditions, which can increase the water in air as the air loss temperature condensations will occur. So high humidity conditions, heat and wet surface are key factors in fungi development. All these factors are promoted by high pressure, high pressure sodium lamps. And there is research, research that also supports all these uh, statements. So research have demonstrated that LED lamps decrease transpiration in a 17% in comparison to high, press, high pressure sodium lamps. As we reduce transpiration, we tend to avoid excess of humidity and also save water. There is also evidence that LED lighting can induce uh, leaf can reduce leaf temperature in 1.3 degrees Celsius in comparison to high press pressure sodium lamps. So, uh, in conclusion, we can say that high, pre high pressure sodium lamps can create a more challenging environment to avoid fungi and bacteria development. So what can we recommend to you? Uh, in order to avoid bacteria and also fungi grow, always look for good humidity levels inside of your system. Avoid high density conditions. Also uh, promote good airflow and also oxygen present in your reservoir. This means that you need to have good airflow in air and also you need to have oxygen in water. Uh, keep clean surface and uh, use clean system to start production. So this means that uh, before you start, you need to be sure that everything in your system is clean. And when you are growing your plants also, uh, uh, try to, to, um, to maintain everything as clean as possible. Avoid over ripening and accumulation of old plants uh, by harvesting on time. If you leave uh, your fruits or your plants getting get old in your system, you will probably uh, trigger the development of bacteria and also fungi. Also remember always to check your pH because this is a way to know if you have bacteria in your system. Normal hydroponic system will tend to increase pH. But if you notice that in your system, you are reducing pH, that is not normal. And you probably have some bacteria growing inside of your nutrient solution. So let's move to insect and arachnids. Insect and arachnids are probably the worst nightmare of many growers. So let's learn how to spot and recognize pests to have a better management in our greenhouse. In North America, we offer different options to control uh, insect and arachnids. So today I will focus in our BioB uh, products, which are organic, uh, an organic way to control. So this is called uh, biological control. Uh, we tend to use insects or different organisms to uh, reduce and prevent or control our pests. So let's start with aphids. So aphids are a small box um, and uh, this box uh, tend to suck nutrients, uh, which is sap, from our plants. So this can cause some problems in, uh, for example, for example, uh, plant hormone for function. Uh, we can find the form leaves. Also, um, the photosynthesis of the plant can be reduced due to uh, the chlorosis that can happen. And also, um, uh, the, the presence of these sticky leaves in, uh, can, can also trigger the development of some fungi or, or bacteria. Um, also, other problem, or other pro problem caused by aphids are um, the uh, cucumber mosaic virus that can be transmitted by uh, this bug and in many many crops. 
So how can we control uh, these, uh, these uh, pests? Uh, we have a Fidius colemani, which is a parasitic wasp that controls several aphids species. Um, and uh, this one can be used to control almost all development stages of aphids. We also have another option in Biobi, which is uh, aphidolets. Uh, this is a mitch and um, can also control effectively the aphids from the family aphidae. So let's move to trips. Uh, trips are insects that can scratch plant tissue and suck sap. So uh, when uh, these insects are uh, sucking sap, then we'll tend to make our leaves yellow, which is chlorosis. Also, uh, they tend to uh, hide in flowers, so they will also um, uh, tend to uh, have some symptoms in flowers. For example, you can find light spots on petals and also necrosis. And fruits can, um, can present a silvery color uh, in uh, some crops like peppers. Also, uh, you can find some small perforations in tomato. And uh, all the damage that this uh, insect is causing in our plants can also trigger uh, some uh, fungal diseases like uh, botrytis and alternaria. And uh, there are also some viruses that can be transmitted by trips, like the tomato, tomato spot uh, white virus, which is the picture that we have in here. You can see how uh, the fruit is having different color, and of course, this is not marketable. So where can we find uh, uh, these insects? As I, I say before, uh, this insect tend to uh, hide inside of flowers. It can also be found in the middle and upper uh, parts of the plant. And how can we control them? So uh, in a bio B, we have an option which is, which is Embliceus, uh, which is a predatory mite. Uh, so this is a mite that can, uh, can, well, is a predator of young stages of uh, trips and also can, uh, can eat uh, the eggs. So it can control trips in different stages of development. Moving to spider mites. So spider mites can be found in many, many crops. This is a common, a common pest, for example, for strawberry. Uh, this spider lays uh, its eggs on leaves. So once that uh, the eggs and uh, and uh, the the spider is already growing, adults can suck the cell contents from leaves and and the host plant cell uh, and the host plant uh, cell by cell. And therefore, we can find a tiny pale spots or scars. And we will have also photosynthesis uh, reduction. And, um, and we, if we don't control uh, this uh, species, uh, we can even have uh, some plants uh, to, uh, dying in our system. And as many of, of, of the pests that we are speak, speaking of, uh, spider, mites, spider mites can also transfer a virus. Uh, it's not very common, but can is is also possible. The option that we have to control spider mites uh, is uh, Phytocellus permissilis. Per permissilis. Uh, so this is an obligatory obligatory predator. Uh, it's very specific to spider mites. So it's uh, very efficient very efficient at trying to control this pest. So uh, the last one is white fly. I think we all know that white fly is one of the most uh, common problems in uh, even open field or uh, greenhouse crops. So white flies are small flies that are usually found under the surface of leaves. 
um, this is insect is a vector of viruses. I think that is why um, most of the growers are really afraid of, of this insect because it's very common and can cause some of diseases that are not very easy to control or even not, not possible to control. So uh, this insect can affect tomato, uh, cucurbitaceous species, uh, sweet potato, and uh, several, several crops. So the symptoms are uh, yellowing uh, color and also leaf curling. I think leaf curling is just the easy way to recognize infestations of, of white flight. And also um, this insect can induce some physiological disorders. Um, it can cause some deficiency in ripening of tomatoes and also uh, white flies uh, that are also feeding uh, of for plants can produce a shiny and a sticky uh, and, and a sticky surface and remember when uh, we have any kind of insect that is making some um, sticky surface in our leaves or our fruits that can also trigger uh, fungi and bacteria development. So the option to control white fly is in Arcasia formosa. This is a parasitic swat, uh, wasp, uh, and uh, this is uh, a very, very efficient way to control uh, white flight. So why is this? This is because um, the, this, uh, this parasitic wasp can, uh, can affect white flight from the beginning of their development. So, this wasp will affect the larva of white fly and uh, will kill white fly um, once uh, once it is it's inside of the of the larva. Uh, then will eat uh, the white fly from inside. So remember that in North Americas we have many options for you. Um, we have also uh, traditional options, or if you're looking for organic options or biological control, we can also help you with that. So let us know and shoot us with any questions you have. I hope you have learned uh, something about this class. And um, I will leave you uh, my email in the article that is in the newsletter. So please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.